Exercise 2.48 The bracket must support the two forces shown, where F1 equals F2 and this is equal to 2 kN. An engineer determines that the bracket will safely support a total force of magnitude 3.5 kN in any direction. Assume that alpha works within 0 and 90 degrees. What is the safe range of the angle alpha? Okay. So, uh, as always, first I'm going to solve the exercise, second, explain what was needed for me to solve it. During the exercise, of course, I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing. So, first, write down the statements. F1 equals F2, and this is equal to 2 kN. The maximum total force magnitude is equal to 3.5 kN in any direction. Alpha only works within 0 and 90 degrees. What is the safe range? Okay, so first I'm going to see how the two forces are working. So F1 is right here and F2 is right here. Let me write down the two axes, Y and X. In the case of F1, we don't have any components. You just we, we just have the magnitude of the vector. So F1 as the vector, sorry, is equal to 2 along the i direction, and this is in kilonewtons. Okay. Regarding the other force, I'm gonna have to decompose it. How's that? Please bear with me. F2 cosine of alpha and F2 sine of alpha. Okay. F2 equals 2, which is the magnitude, which is equal to F2. Cosine of alpha plus 2 sine of alpha. And this is in kilonewtons as well. Remember, this is the i direction and this is the j direction. Now, what is the total force? We have to determine first it. First that, first that, I'm sorry. F1 plus F2 equals 2 plus 2 cosine of alpha plus 2 sine of alpha. This is all on the j dire i direction and this is all on the j direction. Remember, for when you are doing a summatory between vectors, you just have to take into consideration the magnitudes or the, the numbers that are within the same axis. This and this are within the same axis, which is the i direction, representing the x-axis. In the case of these, I'm just going to have to to write down the same thing. But in this case, I have 2 plus 2 cosine of alpha. Okay? Now, this is a total force, but using this as a, as a vector. The exercise is telling me the maximum total force magnitude as in a scalar as a simple number. So what I have to do is to determine the magnitude of this vector. And that magnitude, I'm going to create an equivalence between that magnitude and the uh, maximum force allowed. So please bear with me. The, I'm sorry.
the magnitude of this vector is equal to the square root as every other vector of the two components added together squared okay as I mentioned before I'm going to create an equivalence between this and the maximum magnitude allowed and in this case I'm going to solve this equation for alpha because that is going to be the angle in which I'm going to have the maximum um, force allowed so we can determine this using the calculator or we can do it uh, by hand so first I'm going to do it by hand and then I'm going to double check that information with the calculator so uh, first I'm going to use just this information I'm going to play with this for me to just have this unknown but not two times one two but only one okay that is what I need for me to solve this this exercise so playing with just this this is equal to 2 squared plus 2 times 2 times 2 cosine of alpha plus 2 squared cosine squared of alpha regarding the other part I have 2 squared plus I'm sorry sine of alpha okay now this is equal to 4 plus 8 cosine of alpha plus 4 cosine square of alpha plus 4 sine of alpha now I'm going to take out the 4 so 4 times 1 plus 2 cosine of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha plus sine squared of alpha I think that I missed in a square right here yeah now um, this is equal to 1 which means that this is equal to 4 times 1 plus 2 cosine of alpha plus 1 okay 1 plus 1 equals 2 and finally 8 plus 8 cosine of alpha okay got it now I'm going to take the square root and the other part of the equation 3.5 now what do I have to do well solve this equation for alpha so 8 plus 8 cosine of alpha equals 3.5 squared minus 8 over 8 is equal to the cosine of alpha which means that alpha equals the cosine to the minus 1 power of 3.5 squared minus 8 divided by 8 so within the calculator cosine of minus to the minus 1 power of 3.5 squared minus 8 over 8 alpha equals 57.91 degrees now what is the safe range which is the solution to the problem the angle alpha is the angle generated between the forces F1 and F2 F1 and F2 and right here we have the angle alpha the more the angle 
decreases, the total force is going to be increased because the F2 force will be closer to the F1 force, which means that the sumatory between those two is going to be increased. Okay? Hence, we will have a bigger value for the total force magnitude and that maximum force of 3.5 kilonewtons is going to be below that number. Okay? What do I have to do here? Take the maximum value, allow it, which is 3.5 kilonewtons, determine the maximum, the, the angle in which I have that force, which is 57.91. And finally, I'm going to use a range in which I'm going to have those two forces more separated. Okay? Which means that the safe range or the angle alpha is between 57.91 and 90 degrees. Since alpha is only working within this range. Okay? And that's it, guys. This is how we can solve this exercise. Now, regarding the calculator, we can solve this equation within the calculator. Let me explain how. We just have to place down the information. So 2 plus 2 cosine of, in this case, I'm going to call x squared plus 2 sine of x squared as well. And this is equal, this is equal to 3.5. Now I'm going to press shift, solve. Yes, I want to solve it for x. And it is showing me this result. <clears throat> 777.91. What is happening for when you want to use the calculator? What is happening is that within 360 degrees, we can determine a lot of different angles. Okay, so right here we have 90 degrees, right here we have 180, right here we have 270, and finally right here we have 360 degrees. But what happens if I want to add more to that to that value, more than 360? Well, of course it is going to be possible. For example, this. Okay. This is going to be, for example, I don't know, 800 degrees. Okay. 800 degrees but we we will be able to determine uh, equivalence of those 800 degrees to the ones that are within a 360 degrees angle which means that those 800 degrees are equal to whatever these degrees are okay these ones. 
Okay, and this is an equivalence. I don't know, 34, I don't know, uh, 40. I don't really care about that this moment. So, when I want to solve an equation within the calculator, the calcul I'm sorry, the calculator is going to show me a number. Remember that the calculator does an iterative method in which it is going to try with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 with a lot of different numbers and when this requirement is met then the calculator is going to show the result. This number is the first number that the calculator will attempt. Okay, if I write down, I don't know, 5 it is going to, to, to give me a different solution because it is going to start trying with the number 5. Okay, so uh, let's get back to the one that uh, we had before. I don't know, 777. As you can sh see, it is showing me that result. We have to be able to transform those 777.91 uh, degrees to the ones that are within a 360 degrees angle uh, a 360 degree circle I'm sorry how's that so the answer is this one we're going to divide this by 360 okay this is equal to 2.1608 etc we will take out the whole numbers, which in this case is the number 2. Remember, a decimal number is composed by a whole number and a, a lot of different decimal numbers in this case. So I'm going to get rid of these two, the whole numbers. So minus 2, 0.1608 etc. And finally that number I'm going to multiply uh, I'm going to multiply that number by 360 once again. And right here we have the uh, first answer the, the first answer that we get before. Okay? So please do not confuse along the exercise for when you want to use the calculator uh, with the calculator it's a lot easier I could have been uh, I don't know maybe confused I could have been a little bit confused along this path and if I change for example the, the, the mistake that I did before I forgot to place down these two. If I didn't realize of that mistake, I'm going to get a wrong result. Okay? And if I do get a wrong result, I'm going to start, I don't know, feeling frustrated. Then the calculator is going to show me a 70, 7, 777 number. I'm going to be concerned. But please, Make sure that you understand what the calculator is saying and with that information I'm going to have to find um, to double check the answer that I get before and that's it guys. So that is pretty much it. I hope you understood what I what I mentioned in this video and once again that's it. Um, this is how you can solve this exercise.